Well, hi everyone, and welcome to Zion. My name's Phil Strong, uh, but you probably know that already. Uh, it's great to be with you this morning. It's great to be sharing with you in our Connect time. Welcome to 10 at 10. What I'd love to do at the beginning, as I always do, is to start with scripture. Today, I am reading a scripture that leads us into the message that we'll be sharing today from Pastor Nick Klingenberg. Today's scripture is taken from Acts chapter 1. Jesus says to his disciples, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Almighty God, we commit ourselves to you today and pray that your Holy Spirit and your Holy Scriptures would transform us and bring life to us. And we commit our lives to you afresh today as we seek you with all our hearts. Hey, well, amen, amen. Hey, look, I'm really hoping that uh, you're gathering in table groups at some point this week. Some groups are meeting together on Sunday mornings. Some groups are meeting during the week and, and others are shifting things around. But we're really hoping and want to encourage you to connect with table groups. Uh, we've been reviewing this. We're constantly reviewing how we meet. But know this, we are certain that God has spoken to us, that this is something he really wants us to press into, to move into. So much so that uh, no matter really what the government says around traffic lights and opening up restrictions, we want to press into this gathering around tables to be meeting together, to be coming into that place of koinonia fellowship uh, that I spoke about several weeks ago. If you're not part of a table group, then uh, I invite you to contact the church office, info at zionpeople.nz, and we'd love to help connect you with one of the groups that's gathering around our region. Uh, look, these are all based in a home or a safe place, and it's really an opportunity just to share and do life together. Uh, Kathy and I were part of a table group uh, last week, uh, last Sunday, and uh, we really just enjoyed the uh, openness with the people that were sharing. And we, we broke a cracker and we shared some juice together. We remembered Jesus. And as each person shared what that meant for them, there was a real power in the in connection that we shared. And, and then we prayed and then we just waited. And, and I really, I was so blessed just by the presence of Jesus and his spirit in our midst. And Look, I just share that as a positive testimony that hopefully you too would also be encouraged by that and want to seek after what God's got for you in the connection. Well, today I want to highlight a couple of things that are coming up. We have got a new series starting uh, next week, and that's really our Easter series, and it's Look to Jesus. We're calling it Look to Jesus, and there's a few messages that we've prepared in leading up to and building toward our Easter gathering. And that is right, we are going to gather in the building for Easter Sunday. There'll be a morning celebration service at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday, and you're welcome to join us at Zion. Come on down to the building. Uh, but don't be late, uh, because obviously we may be limited by numbers. We will be operating multiple rooms and facilities in, in line with uh, the safety guidelines as they apply today. Now, if that changes uh, from the day that I'm recording this, then we'll obviously be widening our scope. But I want you to know we're gathering, and I'd love for you to join us. And I'd love for you to think about who can I invite to join us. We'll also be starting a new series later in April called Haggai and the House. Uh, we want to have a look at the book of Haggai, and I encourage you to read it. Look, go on, it's only two chapters, not long. You'll be able to read it backwards and forwards and get to know it really well. Well, we want to unpack what God is saying to the church today from the book of Haggai, and it's full of revelation, and I'm really excited as we look at Haggai and the house, and you can work out what it means for you and how you journey with God in this season of revelation and transformation as God is preparing us for the new temple that we are to be a part of. It's very, very exciting, and I encourage you to be part of it. 
As the ministers of Te Ao Muru gathered in March, we felt it was really opportune for us as churches to unite in prayer for the situation in Ukraine. Uh, we didn't feel it was wise to all try and get everyone in the same building. So we've posted advertisements in the newspaper this week, you may or may not have seen them, quite simply to say, pray for Ukraine. Join the churches of Te Ao Muru as we pray for Ukraine at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So what I want to do now is I want to invite you to join with me in prayer, wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, whenever you're listening to it, lift up your voice in praying for God's hand to move in Ukraine. Let's pray for Ukraine. Almighty God, we, we honour and acknowledge you as the sovereign God whose hand is over all things. And Lord, with the, with the tragedy and the, the destruction and the, 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 oh, just the unfathomable issues that are happening in Ukraine, God, we submit that nation to you. We submit the people of Ukraine to you. We submit the soldiers of Ukraine to you. Lord, your hand of covering and protection will be over them. Lord, even those soldiers from Russia that are really pawns in a war they may not understand, God, we pray that your, your grace and your strength would be in them too. Lord, that you would arrest them with conviction and, and an understanding that would cause them to turn aside and know that God has spoken to them. Father, for those grieving, those suffering loss and tragedy, those that are suffering for injury or illness because of the war, Father, we pray your hand of healing be upon them, that whatever their situation, they would know the presence of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. We unite our faith with the Christians across the world that today are praying for the Ukraine, Ukraine situation. May God's hand move powerfully as we see in Scripture, that he would raise his mighty right arm and bring about redemption and justice and freedom and liberty as the word of God shows us. We thank you, God, that you hear our prayers wherever we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, look, you can continue to pray for Ukraine each day. Maybe put a, cut the thing out of the paper or get a flag off Google and put it on your phone as a reminder to lift up the situation before God every day uh, that his hand would be prevailing in that situation. I want to speak today about a lifestyle of worship and in the description on YouTube below, I'm going to point to uh, a, uh, a devotion that I did recently about worship and the lifestyle of worship and I encourage you to watch that, watch it again if you've already seen it. It's not long, but it's really calling us into that place of worshipping God. I'd also like to advertise that next Sunday, the first Sunday in April, we're going to have an encounter gathering. You know, it's really important. Like in this situation, we can convey information, but it's really hard to convey the invitation to transformation. And so we want to bring people together. We want to encounter the Spirit of God personally in a real way, in a life-changing way. And we're going to do that with worship as our focus. So four o'clock next Sunday afternoon, come and join us in the building. We're going to have a time where we lift up the name of Jesus, where we bless and praise his name, where we worship him as he truly deserves. And as we encounter his presence, we know that we will be transformed. And Lord, look, even if we're not transformed, we are called as sons and daughters of God to minister to God, to lift up his name, to call upon his name, to bless him as God Almighty. So even if we don't get the feel good feeling, we should do it anyway. So uh, look, I'm calling you to come together. I'm calling you to come out and call on the name of the Lord. We can intercede from a place of intimacy when we have worshipped God for he is truly worthy of that worship. And when we position ourselves in that place, we can shake the heavens with our prayers because we're doing it seated in that place of authority that Christ has prepared for us. The only way I believe we access that is through praise and worship. Because praise puts us in our place. When we're not praising ourselves, but praising God, we put ourselves in the right place. And, and so I want to invite you out. Uh, if you're not able to join us, uh, we'll advertise a playlist for you. You can worship at home. Have your own worship party. Because I can assure you, before Sunday comes, I will be having a worship party myself. But I encourage you with a lifestyle of worship. Look, I, I use my car as a place to worship. I crank the music up and I, I sing or I pray. Or I just, just allow the lyrics of those songs to wash over me and remind me of the faithfulness of God. And there's some songs right now that are really blessing me. That I, I'm calling on the, the God of, of Jacob. I'm calling on the God of Moses. I'm, I'm calling out. I'm calling on the God of Mary who stooped down and blessed this young girl who was faithful and obedient. I'm calling on the same God and that's the gift of worship. 
So I encourage you to have some time of worship. I encourage you to have a lifestyle of worship. I'm encouraging you to put time aside to focus on worshiping God. And when you put God first and you worship him, everything else comes into perspective. Go on, I dare you, try and have a lifestyle of worship. Finally, as I pray, I want to pray for the church, and I want to invite you to pray for Zion and the Christian churches of Te Aumuru. I want to say thanks for your generosity, and look, if you're not someone that's currently sowing into the ministry of Zion, then I'll make sure there's a link down in the description here. Make sure you see it on the screen, and you can, uh, you can sow into and invest into the work of the kingdom that we are doing in our community and across the nations that we partner with. I want to pray for the abundance of God's resources to be uh, opened up. Like you know, Malachi 3 says, that test me, this God says, and I'll open the windows of heaven. The storehouses of heaven will be accessed by us as we are faithful with what God has already given us. And uh, really, I'm declaring and praying that blessing across the Christian churches of Te Aumudu, that they would know the resource they need for um, their missions programs. I'm praying that the churches of Te Aumudu would know that the resources of God are available for their um, building initiatives. There's a couple of churches with building initiatives around expansion and development. I'm praying that the churches of Te Aumudu would have access to, by faith, to the resources really to build and equip God's people for the works of ministry. Come on, let's, let's join in praying that God would truly bless the Christian churches of Te Aumuru. And I just want to, as a minister of one of those churches, I just want to bless you and say, thanks for being partners with us. Uh, we truly do honour you and value you for your faithfulness before God. Uh, but more importantly, I know that he's going to honour you and value you before others. Hey, it's been great to be with you for 10 at 10. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. Uh, what's going to pop up on the screen right now is a link to the message for today. So make sure you click on that and jump across and hear what Pastor Nick's going to say. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, he was my pastor when I first came to Hamilton in 1998. We've journeyed through life together and family. We've journeyed through tragedy together where he was really a minister and a, a faithful priest to me and my family. Uh, and now we're friends and we get to do this together. And uh, he's such a blessing to me and I know he's going to be a blessing to you. So God bless you, have a great day, and enjoy God.